Chapter One of the Bacchae. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tony Addison. The Bacchae by Euripides. Translated by Gilbert Murray. The background represents the front of the castle of Pentheus, king of Thebes. At one side is visible the sacred tomb of Semele, a little enclosure overgrown with wild vines, with a cleft in the rocky floor of it, from which there issues at times steam or smoke the god dionysus is discovered alone dionysus behold god's son is come unto this land of thebes even i dionysus whom the brand of heaven's hot splendour lit to life when she who bore me Cadmus' daughter Semele died here. So changed in shape from God to man, I walk again by Dursa's streams and scan Ismena's shore. There by the castle's side I see her place, the tomb of the lightning's bride, the wreck of smouldering chambers and the great faint wreaths of fire undying as the hate dies not that hero held for semele ay cadmus hath done well in purity he keeps this place apart in violet his daughter's sanctuary and i have set my green and clustered vines to robe it round Far now behind me lies the golden ground of Lydian and of Phrygian, far away the wide-hot plains where Persian sunbeams play, the Bactrian war-holds, and the storm-oppressed clime of the Mede, and Araby the blest, and Asia all, that by the salt sea lies in proud and battled cities motley wise of Helene and Barbarian interwrought, and now I come to Hellas, having taught all the world else my dances and my right of mysteries, to show me in men's sight manifest God. And first of Helene lands I cry thus, Thebes, to waken, set her hands to clasp my wand, mine ivied javelin, and round her shoulders hang my wild fawn skin, for they have scorned me, whom it least beseemed, Semele's sisters, mocked my birth, nor deemed that Dionysus sprang from Diane's seed. My mother sin, said they, and in her need, with Cadmus plotting, cloaked her human shame with the dread name of Zeus. For that the flame from heaven consumed her, seeing she lied to God. Thus must they vaunt, and therefore hath my rod on them first fallen and stung them forth wild-eyed from empty chambers. The bare mountain-side is made their home, and all their hearts are flame. Yea, I have bound upon the necks of them the harness of my rights, and with them all the seed of womankind from hut and hall of Thebes hath this my magic goaded out and there with the old king's daughters in a rout confused they make their dwelling-place between the roofless rocks 
and shadowy pine trees green thus shall this thebes our source of er it smart learn and forget not till she crave her part in mine adoring thus must i speak clear to save my mother's fame and crown me here as true god born by simile to zeus now cadmus yieldeth up his throne and use of royal honour to his daughter's son pentheus who on my body hath begun a war with god he thrusteth me away from due drink offering and when men pray my name entreats not therefore on his own head and his people's shall my power be shown then to another land when all things here are well must i fare onward making clear my godhead's might but should this theban town assay with wrath and battle to drag down my maids lo in their path myself shall be and manic armies battled after me for this i veil my godhead with the one form of the things that die and walk as man o oh, brood of tomolus o'er oh, the wide world flown o oh, lydian band my chosen and mine own damsels uplifted o'er the orient deep to wander where i wander and to sleep where i sleep up and wake the old sweet sound the clang that i and mystic rear found the timbrel of the mountain gather all thebes to your song round pentheus royal hall i seek my new-made worshippers to guide their dances up Catharan's pine-clad side as he departs there comes stealing in from the left a band of fifteen eastern women the light of the sunrise streaming upon their long white robes and ivy-bound hair they wear fawn-skins over the robes and carry some of them timbrels some pipes and other instruments many bear the thyrsus or sacred wand made of reed ringed with ivy they enter stealthily till they see that the place is empty and then begin their mystic song of worship chorus a maiden from asia from the day spring that uprises to bromios ever glorying we came we laboured for our lord in many guises we toil but the toil is as the prize is thou mystery we hail thee by thy name another who lingers in the road who espies us he shall hide him in his house nor be bold let the heart keep silence that defies us for i sing this day to dionysus the song that is appointed from of old all the maidens o oh, blessed he in all wise who hath drunk the living phantom whose life no folly staineth and his soul is near to god whose sins are lifted paul wise as he worships on the mountain and where sibylle ordaineth our mother he has trod his head with ivy laden and his thyrsus tossing high for our god he lifts his cry up o bacchae wife and maiden come o ye bacchae come o bring the joy bestower god seed of god the sower bring bromios in his power 
from phrygia's mountain dome to street and town and tower oh bring ye bromios home whom erst in anguish lying for an unborn life's desire as a dead thing in the thunder his mother cast to earth for her heart was dying dying in the white heart of the fire till zeus the lord of wonder devised new lairs of birth yea his own flesh tore to hide him and with clasps of bitter gold did a secret sun enfold and the queen knew not beside him till the perfect hour was there then a horned god was found and a god with serpents crowned and for that our serpents wound in the ones his maidens bear and the songs of serpents sound in the mazes of their hair some maidens all hail o thebes thou nurse of semele with semele's wild ivy crown thy towers O oh, burst in bloom of wreathing bryony, berries and leaves and flowers, uplift the dark divine wand, the oak wand and the pine wand, and don thy fawn skin, fringed in purity with fleecy white like ours. O oh, cleanse thee in the wand's waving pride, yea, all men shall dance with us and pray, when Bromios his company shall guide. Hillward, ever hillward, where they stay, the flock of the believing, the maids from loom and weaving, by the magic of his breath, blown away. Others. Hail thou, O nurse of Zeus, O caverned haunt, where fierce arms clanged to guard God's cradle rare, for thee of old some crested corriband first woke in cretan air the wild orb of our orgies our timbrel and thy gorges rang with this strain and blended phrygian chant and sweet keen pipes were there but the timbrel the timbrel was another's and away to mother ear it must wend and to our holy singing from the mothers the mad satyrs carried it to blend in the dancing and the cheer of our third and perfect year, and it serves Dionysus in the end. A maiden. O oh, glad, glad on the mountains to swoon in the race outworn, when the holy fawn skin clings and all else sweeps away to the joy of the red quick fountains, the blood of the hill goat torn, the glory of wild beast ravenings where the hilltops catch the day to the Phrygian Lydian mountains. Tis Bromios leads the way. Another maiden. Then streams the earth with milk, yea, streams with wine and nectar of the bee, and through the air dim perfume steams of Syrian frankincense, and he, our leader, from his thyrsus spray a torchlight tosses high and higher a torchlight like a beacon fire to waken all that faint and stray and sets them leaping as he sings his tresses rippling to the sky and deep beneath the minet cry his proud voice rings come o ye back i come all the maidens hither o fragrant of tomalus the golden come with the voice of timbrel and drum let the cry of your joyance uplift and embolden the god of the joy cry o bacchanals come with pealing of pipes and with phrygian clamour 
on where the vision of holiness thrills and the music climbs and the maddening glamour with the wild white maids to the hills to the hills oh then like a colt as he runs by a river a colt by his dam when the heart of him sings with the keen limbs drawn and the fleet foot a quiver away the bacchanal springs enter tiresias he is an old man and blind leaning upon a staff and moving with slow stateliness though wearing the ivy and the bacchic fawn-skin tiresias ho oh, there who keeps the gate go summon me cadmus agenor's son who crossed the sea from sidon and upreared this theban hold go whosoe'er thou art see he be told tiresias seeketh him himself will gauge mine errand and the compact age with age i vowed with him grey hair with snow-white hair to deck the new gods thyrsus and to wear his fawn-skin and with ivy crown our brows enter cadmus from the castle he is even older than tiresias and wears the same attire cadmus true friend i knew that voice of thine that flows like mellow wisdom from a fountain wise and lo i come prepared in all the guise and harness of this god are we not told his is the soul of that dead life of old that sprang from mine own daughter surely then must thou and i with all the strength of men exalt him where then shall i stand where tread the dance and toss this bowed and hoary head o oh, friend in thee is wisdom guide my grey and eld-worn steps eld-worn tiresias nay i am not weak at the first movement of worship his manner begins to change a mysterious strength and exaltation enter into him surely this arm could smite the wild earth with its thyrsus day and night and faint not sweetly and forgetfully the dim years fall from off me tiresias as with thee with me tis likewise light am i and young and will essay the dancing and the song cadmus quick then our chariots to the mountain road tiresias nay to take steeds were to mistrust the god cadmus so be it mine old arm shall guide thee there tiresias the god himself shall guide have thou no care cadmus and in all thebes shall no man dance but we tiresias i thebes is blinded thou and i can see cadmus tis weary waiting hold my hand friend so tiresias lo there is mine so linked let us go cadmus shall things of dust the gods dark ways despise tiresias or prove our wit on heaven's high mysteries not thou and i that heritage sublime our sires have left us wisdom old as time no word of man how deep so e'er his thought and one of subtlest toil may bring to naught i men will rail that i forget my years to dance and wreathe with ivy these white hairs what recks it seeing the god no line hath told to mark what man shall dance or young or old but craves his honours from mortality all no man marked apart and great shall be cadmus after looking away toward the mountain tiresias 
since this light thou canst not read i must be seer for thee here comes in speed pentheus echion's son whom i have raised to rule my people in my stead amazed he seems stand close and mark what we shall hear the two stand back partially concealed stand close and mark what we shall hear the two stand back partially concealed while there enters in hot haste pentheus followed by a bodyguard he is speaking to the soldier in command pentheus scarce had i crossed our borders when mine ear was caught by this strange rumour that our own wives our own sisters from their hearths are flown to wild and secret right and cluster there high on the shadowy hills with dance and prayer to adore this new-made god this dionys whate'er he be and in their company deep wine-jars stand and ever and anon away into the loneliness now one steals forth and now a second maid or dame where love lies waiting not of god the flame they say of bacchius wraps them bacchius nay tis more to aphrodite that they pray howbeit all that i have found my men hold bound and shackled in our dungeon den the rest i will go hum then ay and snare my birds with nets of iron to quell their prayer and mountain song and rites of rascaldom they tell me too there is a stranger come a man of charm and spell from lydian seas a head all gold and cloudy fragrances a wine-red cheek and eyes that hold the light of the very cyprian day and live long night he haunts amid the damsels or each lip dangling his cup of joyance let me grip him once but once within these walls right swift that one shall cease its music and that drip of tossing curls lie still when my rude sword falls between neck and trunk tis all his word this tale of dionysus how that same babe that was blasted by the lightning flame with his dead mother for that mother's lie was reconceived born perfect from the thigh of zeus and now is god what call ye these dreams jibes of the unknown wanderer blasphemies that crave the very gibbet stay god what here is another marvel see i not in motley fawn skins robe the vision seer tiresias and my mother's father here how depth of scorn adoring with the wand of bacchius father nay mine eyes are fond it is not your white head so fancy flown it cannot be i cast off that ivy crown on mine own mother's sire set free that ham that cowers about its staff tis thou hast planned this work tiresias tis thou must set another altar and another yet amongst us watch new birds and win more hire of gold interpreting new signs of fire but for thy silver hair as i tell thee truth than thou wert sitting chained amid thy crew of raving damsels for this evil dream thou hast brought us of new gods when once the gleam of grapes have lit a woman's festival in all their prayers it's no more health at all leader of the chorus the words are not heard by pentheus injurious king hast thou no care for god nor cadmus sower of the giant sod life spring to great echion and to thee tiresias good words my son come easily when he that speaks is wise and speaks but for the right else come they never swift are thine and bright as though with thought 
yet have no thought at all. Lo, this new God, whom thou dost flout with all, I cannot speak the greatness wherewith he in Hellas shall be great. Two spirits there be, young prince, that in man's world are first of worth. Demeter one is named, she is the earth, call her which name thou will, who feeds man's frame with sustenance of things dry, and that which came her work to perfect second is the power from Semele born he found the liquid shower hid in the grape he rests man's spirit dim from grieving when the vine exalteth him he giveth sleep to sink the fretful day in cool forgetting is there any way with man's sore heart save only to forget yea being god the blood of him is set before the gods in sacrifice that we for his sake may be blessed and so to thee that fable shames him how this god was knit into god's flesh nay learn the truth of it cleared from the false when from that deadly light zeus saved the babe and up to olympus height raised him and hera's wrath would cast him thence then zeus devised him a divine defence a fragment of the world encircling fire he rent apart and wrought to his desire of shape and hue in the image of the child and gave to hera's rage and so beguiled by change and passing time this tale was born how the babe god was hidden in the torn flesh of his sire he hath no shame thereby a prophet is he likewise prophecy cleaves to all frenzy but beyond all else to frenzy of prayer then in us verily dwells the god himself and speaks the thing to be yea and of Ares' realm apart hath he when mortal armies mailed and arrayed have in strange fear or ever blade met blade fled maddened tis this god hath palsied them i over delphi's rock-built diadem thou yet shall see him leaping with his train of fire across the twin peak mountain plain flaming the darkness with his mystic wand and great in hellas list and understand king pentheus dream not thou that force is power nor if thou hast a thought and that thought sour and sick o oh, dream not thought is wisdom up receive this god to thebes pour forth the cup of sacrifice and pray and read thy brow thou fearest for the damsels think thee now how toucheth this the part of dionyse to hold maids pure perforce in them it lies and their own hearts and in the wildest right cometh no stain to her whose heart is white nay mark me thou hast thy joy when the gate stands thronged and pentheus name is lifted great and high by thebes in clamour shall not he rejoice in his due meed of majesty how be it this cadmus whom thou scornst and i will wear his crown and tread his dances i our hairs are white yet shall that dance be trod i will not lift mine arm to war with god for thee nor all thy words madness most fell is on thee madness wrought by some dread spell but not by spell nor leechcraft to be cured chorus grey prophet worthy of phoebus is thy word and wise in honouring bromios our great god cadmus my son right well tiresias points thy road O oh, make thine habitation here with us, Not lonely against men's uses. Hazardous is this quick bird-like beating Of thy thought where no thought dwells. Grant that this god be naught, Yet let that naught be somewhat in thy mouth. Lie boldly and say he is, So north and south shall marvel How there sprang a thing divine From Smiley's flesh, And honour all our line drawing nearer to pentheus is there not blood before thine eyes even now our lost actaeon's blood 
when long ago his own red hounds through yonder forest dim tore unto death because he vaunted him against most holy artemis oh beware and let me read thy temples make thy prayer with us and walk thee humbly in god's sight he makes as if to set the wreath on pentheus head pentheus down with that hand or right thee to thy right nor smear on me thy foul contagion turning upon tiresias this thy folly's head and prompter shall not miss the justice that he needs go half my god forth to the rock seat where he dwells in ward of birds and wonders rend the stone with crow and trident make one wreck of high and low and toss his bands to all the winds of air ha have i found the way to sting thee there the rest forth through the town and seek amain this girl-faced stranger that hath wrought such bane to all thebes preying on our maids and wives seek till ye find and lead him here in gibes till he be judged and stoned and weep in blood the day he troubled pentheus with his god the guard set forth in two bodies pentheus goes into the castle tiresias hard heart how little dost thou know what seed thou sowest blind before and now indeed most mad come cadmus let us go our way and pray for this our persecutor pray for this poor city that the righteous god move not in anger take thine ivy rod and help my steps as i help thine to ill if two old men should fall by the roadway still come what come may our service shall be done to bacchius the all-father's mystic son o pentheus named of sorrow shall he claim from all thy house fulfilment of his name old cadmus nay i speak not from mine art but as i see blind words and a blind heart the two old men go off towards the mountain chorus some maidens thou immaculate on high thou recording purity thou that stoopest golden wing earthward manward pitying hearest thou this angry king hearest thou the rage and scorn gainst the lord of many voices him of mortal mother born him in whom man's heart rejoices girt with garlands and with glee first in heaven's sovereignty for his kingdom it is there in the dancing and the prayer in the music and the laughter in the vanishing of care and of all before and after in the god's high banquet when gleams the great blood flashed to heaven yea and in the feasts of men comes his crowned slumber then pain is dead and hate forgiven others loose thy lips from out the rain lift thy wisdom to disdain what so law thou canst not see scorning so the end shall be uttermost calamity tis the life of quiet breath tis the simple and the true storm nor earthquake shattereth nor shall aught the house undo where they dwell for far away hidden from the eyes of day watchers are there in the skies that can see man's life and prize deeds well done by things of clay but the world's wise are not wise claiming more than mortal may life is such a little thing lo their present is departed and the dreams to which they cling come not mad imagining theirs i ween and empty-hearted diverse maidens where is the home for me o cyprus set in the sea 
Aphrodite's home in the soft sea foam, would I could wend to thee, where the wings of the loves are furled, and faint the heart of the world. I, into Paphos isle, where the rainless meadows smile with riches rolled from the hundredfold mouths of the far-off Nile, streaming beneath the waves to the roots of the seaward caves. But a better land is there, where Olympus cleaves the air, the high still dell where the muses dwell, fairest of all things fair, oh, there is grace, and there is the heart's desire, and peace to adore thee, thou spirit of guiding fire. A god of heaven is he, and born in majesty, yet hath he mirth in the joy of the earth, and he loveth constantly her who brings increase, the feeder of children, peace. No grudge hath he of the great, no scorn of the mean estate, but to all that liveth his wine he giveth, griefless, immaculate. Only on them that spurn joy may his anger burn. Love thou the day and the night, be glad of the dark and the light, and avert thine eyes from the law of the wise, that have honour in proud men's sight. The simple, nameless herd of humanity hath deeds and faith that are truth enough for me. As the chorus ceases, a party of the guards return, leading in the midst of them Dionysus bound. The soldier in command stands forth, as Pentheus, hearing the tramp of feet, comes out from the castle. Soldier Our quest is finished, and thy prey, O king, caught, for the chase was swift, and this wild thing most tame, yet never flinched, nor thought to flee, but held both hands out unresistingly. No change, no blanching of the wine-red cheek, he waited while we came, and bade us recall thy decree. Yea, laughed, and made my hest easy, till I for very shame confessed and said, O stranger, not of mine own will I bind thee, but his bidding to fulfil who sent me. And those prisoned maids with all, whom thou didst cease and bind within the wall of thy great dungeon, they are fled, O king, free in the woods a dance and glorying to Bromios of their own impulse fell to earth, men say, fetter and manacle, and bar slid back untouched of mortal hand. Yea, full of many wonders to the land is this man come. Howbeit it lies with thee. Pentheus, ye are mad. Unhand him. How so swift he beat my toils around him, and he shall not fly. The guards loose the arms of Dionysus. Pentheus studies him for a while in silence, then speaks jeeringly. Dionysus remains gentle and unafraid. Marry a fair shape for a woman's eye, sir, stranger, and thou seekest no more, I ween. Long curls with all. Ah, oh, that shows thou ne'er hast been a wrestler. Down both cheeks so softly tossed, and winsome, and a white skin. It hath cost thee pains to please thy damsels with this white and red of cheeks that never face the light. Dionysus is silent. Speak, sirrah. Tell me first thy name and race. Dionysus. No glory is therein, nor yet disgrace. Thou hast heard of Tomolus, the bright hill of flowers. Pentheus. Surely, the ridge that winds by Sardis towers. Dionysus. Thence am I. Lydia was my fatherland. 
Pentheus. And whence these revelations that thy band spreadeth in Hellas? Dionysus. Their intent and use, Dionysus oped to me the child of Zeus. Pentheus brutally, is there a Zeus there that can still beget young gods? Dionysus. Nay, only he whose seal was set here in thy Thebes on Semele. Pentheus. What way descended he upon thee, in full day or vision of night? Dionysus. Most clear he stood, and scanned my soul, and gave his emblems to mine hand. Pentheus. What like be they, these emblems? Dionysus. That may none reveal, nor know, save his elect alone. Pentheus, and what good bring they to the worshipper? Dionysus, good beyond price, but not for thee to hear. Pentheus, thou trickster, thou wouldst prick me on the moor to seek them out. Dionysus, his mysteries of or the touch of sin-lovers. Pentheus, and so thine eyes saw this god plain. What guise had he? Dionysus, what guise it liked him. T'was not I ordained his shape. Pentheus, I deftly turned again, an idle jape, and nothing answered. Dionysus, wise words, being brought to blinded eyes, will seem as things of naught. Pentheus, and comest thou first to Thebes, to have thy god established? Dionysus, nay, all Barbary hath trod his dance ere this. Pentheus, a low blind folk I ween beside our Hellenes. Dionysus, higher and more keen in this thing, though their ways are not thy way. Pentheus, how is thy worship held, by night or day? Dionysus, most oft by night, tis a majestic thing, the darkness. Pentheus, ah, with women worshipping, tis craft and rottenness. Dionysus, by day no less, whoso will seek, may find unholiness. Pentheus, enough, thy doom is fixed, for false pretence corrupting Thebes. Dionysus, not mine, but thine. For dense blindness of heart, And for blaspheming God. Pentheus, a ready knave it is, And brazen brad, this mystery priest. Dionysus, come, say what it shall be, my doom, What dire thing wilt thou do to me? Pentheus, first shear that delicate curl That dangles there. He beckons to the soldiers who approach Dionysus. Dionysus, I have vowed it to my God, tis holy head. The soldiers cut off the tress. Pentheus, next yield me up thy staff. Dionysus, raise thine own hand to take it. This is Dionysus one. Pentheus takes the staff. Pentheus, last I will hold thee prisoned here. Dionysus, my lord God will unloose me when I speak the word. Pentheus, he may, if e'er again amid his bands of saints 
He hears thy voice. Dionysus. Even now he stands close here, And sees all that I suffer. Pentheus, what? Where is he? For mine eyes discern him not. Dionysus, where I am? Tis thine own impurity That veils him from thee. Pentheus, the dog jeers at me, At me and Thebes bind him. The soldiers begin to bind him. Dionysus, I charge ye bind me not, I having vision and ye blind. Pentheus, and I with better right, Say, bind the more. The soldiers obey. Dionysus, thou knowest not what end thou seekest, Nor what deed thou doest, nor what man thou art. Pentheus, mocking, I gave a son, and on the father's part, Echion's height Pentheus. Dionysus, so let it be, a name forwritten to calamity. Pentheus, away, and tie him where the steeds are tied. I let him lie in the manger. There abide and stare into the darkness. And this rout of womankind that clusters thee about, Thy ministers of worship, are my slaves. It may be I will sell them o'er the waves, hither and thither, Else they shall be set to labour at my distaffs, And forget their timbrel, and their songs of dawning day. Dionysus, I go, for that which may not be, I may not suffer. Yet for this thy sin, lo, he whom thou deniest cometh after thee for recompense. Yea, in thy wrong to us, thou hast cast him into thy prison-house. Dionysus, without his wand, his hair shorn, and his arms tightly bound, is led off by the guards to his dungeon. Pentheus returns into the palace. Chorus. Some maidens. Achelous, roaring daughter, holy Dursa, virgin water, bathed ye not of old in thee the babe of God, the mystery, when from out the fire immortal to himself his God did take him to his own flesh, and bespake him, enter now, life's second portal, motherless mystery, Lo, I break mine own body for thy sake, Thou of the twofold door, and seal thee mine, O Bromios. Thus he spake, and to this thy land reveal thee all. Still my prayer toward thee quivers, Durst say, still to thee I hie me. Why, O blessed among rivers, Wilt thou fly me and deny me? By his own joy I vow, by the grape upon the bough, Thou shalt seek him in the midnight, Thou shalt love him even now. Other maidens, Dark and of the dark impassioned, Is this Pentheus' blood, yea, fashioned of the dragon, And his birth from Echion, child of earth, He is no man but a wonder. Did the earth child not beget him, As a red giant to set him, Against God, against the thunder, He will bind me for his prize, Me, the bride of Dionyse, And my priest, my friend, is taken, Even now, and buried lies, In the dark he lies forsaken. All, lo, we race with death, we perish, Dionysus here before thee, Dost thou markest not, nor cherish, Who implore thee and adore thee? Hither down Olympus' side, Come, O holy one, defied, Be thy golden wand uplifted, O'er the tyrant in his pride. A maiden, O oh, where art thou? In thine own Nisa thou our help alone, 
O oh, fierce beasts in orient lands, doth thy thronging Thersus wave by the high Corician cave, or where stern Olympus stands in the elm woods and the oaken there, where Orpheus harped of old and the trees awoke and knew him, and the wild thing gathered to him as he sang amid the broken glens his music manifold blessed land of peary dionysus loveth thee he will come to thee with dancing come with joy and mystery with the maynards at his hest winding winding to the west cross the flood of swiftly glancing axios in majesty cross the lydias the giver of good gifts and waving green cross that farther stream of story through a land of steeds and glory rolling bravest fairest river heir of mortal seen a voice within ayo ayo awake ye damsels hear my cry calling my chosen hearken ye a maiden who speaketh o oh, what echoes thus another a voice a voice that calleth us the voice be of good cheer lo it is i the child of zeus and semele a maiden o oh, master master it is thou another o oh, holy voice be with us now the voice spirit of the chained earthquake hear my word awake awake an earthquake suddenly shakes the pillars of the castle a maiden ha ah, what is coming shall the hall of pentheus racked in ruin fall leader our god is in the house ye maids adore him chorus we adore him all the voice unveil the lightning's eye arouse the fire that sleeps against this house fire leaps up on the tomb of semele a maiden ah oh, saw ye marked ye there the flame from semele's and hallowed sod awakened yea the death that came ablaze from heaven of old the same hot splendour of the shaft of god leader how oh, cast ye cast ye to the earth the lord cometh against this house o oh, cast ye down ye trembling damsels he our own adored god's child hath come and all is overthrown the maidens cast themselves upon the ground their eyes earthward dionysus alone and unbound enters from the castle dionysus ye damsels of the morning hills why lie ye thus dismayed ye marked him then our master and the mighty hand he laid on tower and rock shaking the house of pentheus but arise and cast the trembling from your flesh and lift untroubled eyes leader o oh, light in darkness is it thou o oh, priest is this thy face my heart leaps out to greet thee from the deep of loneliness dionysus fell ye so quick despairing when beneath the gate i passed should the gates of pentheus quell me or his darkness make me fast leader oh what was left if thou wert gone what could i but despair how hast thou escaped the man of sin who freed thee from the snare dionysus i had no pain nor peril twas mine own hand set me free leader thine arms were jived dionysus nay no jibe no touch was laid on me twas there i mocked him in his jibes and gave him dreams for food for when he led me down behold before the stall there stood a bull of offering and this king he bit his lips and straight fell on and bounded hoop and limb with gasping wrath and sweat and i sat watching then a voice 
and lo, our lord was come, and the house shook, and a great flame stood o'er his mother's tomb, and Pentheus hide this way and that, and called his thralls amain for water, lest his roof-tree burn, and all toiled, all in vain. Then deemed a sudden I was gone, and left this fire, and sped back to the prison portals, and his lifted sword shone red. But there, methinks, the god had wrought, I speak but as I guess, some dream shape in mine image, for he smote at emptiness, stabbed in the air, and strove in wrath, as though twere me he slew. Then mid his dreams god smote him yet again. He overthrew all that high house, and there in wreck for evermore it lies, that the day of this my bondage may be saw in Pentheus' eyes. And now his sword is fallen, and he lies outworn and wan, who dared to rise against his god in wrath, being but man. And I uprose and left him, and in all peace took my path, forth to my chosen wrecking light of Pentheus and his wrath. But soft, methinks a footstep sounds even now within the hall. Tis he, how think ye he will stand, and what words speak withal? I will endure him gently, though he come in fury hot, for still are the ways of wisdom, and her temper trembleth not. End of chapter 1chapter 2 of the Bacchae by Euripides translated by Gilbert Murray this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by Tony Addison enter pentheus in fury pentheus it is too much this eastern knave hath slipped his prison whom i held but now hard gripped in bondage ah a tis he oh what sirrah how show'st thou before my portals he advances furiously upon him dionysus softly there and set a quiet carriage to thy rage pentheus how comest thou here how didst thou break thy cage speak dionysus said i not or didst thou mark not me there was one living that should set me free Pentheus, who ever wilder are these tales of thine? Dionysus, he who first made for man the clustered vine. Pentheus, I scorn him and his vines. Dionysus, for Dionys tis well, for in thy scorn his glory lies pentheus to his guard go swift to all the towers and bar with all each gate dionysus what cannot god or leap a wall pentheus o oh, wit thou hast save where thou needest it Dionysus, where so it most imports, there is my wit. Nay, peace, abide till he who hasteth from the mountain side with news for thee be come. We will not fly, but wait on thy command. Enter suddenly and in haste a messenger from the mountain. Messenger. Great Pentheus, lord of all this Theban land, I come from Hycatheron, where the frost snow spangles gleam and cease not evermore. 
Pentheus, and what of import may thy coming bring? Messenger, I have seen the wild white women there, O king, whose fleet limbs darted arrow-like but now from Thebes away, and come to tell thee how they work strange deeds and passing marvel. Yet I first would learn thy pleasure. Shall I set my whole tale forth, or veil the stranger part? Yea, Lord, I fear the swiftness of thy heart, thine edged wrath, and more than royal soul. Pentheus, thy tale shall nothing scathe thee. Tell the whole. It skills not to be wroth with honesty. Nay, if thy news of them be dark, tis he shall pay it, who bewitched and led them on. Messenger. Our herded kind were moving in the dawn up to the peaks, the greyest, coldest time when the first rays steal earthward, and the rime yields, when I saw three bands of them, the one Otonoe led, one Eno, one thine own mother Agave. There beneath the tree sleeping they lay, like wild things flung at ease in the forest, one half sinking on a bed of deep pine greenery, one with careless head amid the fallen oak leaves, almost cold in purity, not as thy tale was told of wine-cups and wild music and the chase for love amid the forest's loneliness then rose the queen agave suddenly amid her band and gave the gods wild cry awake ye bacchanals i hear the sound of horned kine awake ye then all round alert the warm sleep fallen from their eyes, a marvel of swift ranks I saw them rise, dames young and old and gentle maids unwed among them. O'er their shoulders first they shed their tresses, and caught up the fallen fold of mantles, where some clasp had loosened hold, and girt the dappled fawn skins in with long quick snakes that hissed and writhed with quivering tongue and one a young fawn held, and one a wild wolf cub, and fed them with white milk, and smiled in love, young mothers with a mother's breast, and babes at home forgotten. Then they pressed, breathed ivy round their brows, and oaken sprays, and flowering bryony, and one would raise her wand, and smite the rock, and straight did jet of quick bright water came another set her thyrsus in the bosomed earth and there was red wine that the god sent up to her a darkling fountain and if any lips sought whiter draughts with dipping finger-tips they pressed the sub and gushing from the ground came springs of milk and reed wands ivy crowned ran with sweet honey drop by drop o oh, king hadst thou been there as i and seen this thing with prayer and most high wonder hadst thou gone to adore this god whom now thou railst upon howbeit the kind wardens and shepherds straight came to one place amazed and held debate and one being there who walked the streets and scanned the ways of speech took lead of them whose hand knew but the slow soil and the solemn hill, and flattering spoke and asked, Is it your will, masters, we stay the mother of the king Agave from her lawless worshipping, and win us royal thanks? And this seemed good to all, and through the branching underwood we hid us, cowering in the leaves, and there through the appointed hour they made their prayer and worship of the wand with one accord of heart and cry yakos bromios lord god of god born and all the mountain felt and worshipped with them and the wild things knelt and ramped and gloried and the wilderness was filled with moving voices 
and dim stress. Soon as it chanced, beside my thicket close, the queen herself passed dancing, and I rose and sprang to seize her, but she turned her face upon me. Ho, oh, my rovers of the chase, my wild white hounds, we are hunted, up each rod, and follow, follow for our lord and god. Thereat, for fear they tear us all, we fled amazed, and on with hand and weapon had they swept toward our herds that browsed the green hill grass. Great uttered kine, then hadst thou seen bellowing in sword-like hands that cleave and tear, a live steer riven asunder, and the air tossed with rent ribs, or limbs of cloven tread, and flesh upon the branches, and a red rain from the deep green pines. Yea, bulls of pride, horns swift to rage, were fronted, and aside flung stumbling, by those multitudinous hands dragged pitilessly, and swifter were the bands of garbed flesh and bone, unbound with all, than on thy royal eyes the lids may fall. Then on, like birds, by their own speed upborne, they swept toward the plains of waving corn that lie beside Asopus' banks, and bring to Thebes the rich fruit of her harvesting. On Hesea and Eurythrae that lie nursed amid Githaron's bowering rocks, they burst destroying as a foeman's army comes. They caught up little children from their homes, high on their shoulders, babes unheld that swayed and laughed and fell not. All a wreck they made, Yea, bronze and iron did shatter, And in play struck hither and thither, Yet no wound had they, Caught fire from out the hearths, Yea, carried hot flames in their tresses, And were scorched not. The village folk in wrath took spear and sword, And turned upon the back eye, Then, dread lord, the wonder was, for spear nor barbered brand could scathe nor touch the damsels, but the wand, the soft and wreathed wand, their white hands sped, blasted those men and quelled them, and they fled dizzily. Sure some god was in these things, and the holy women back to those strange springs returned that God had sent them when the day dawned on the upper heights and washed away the stain of battle. And those girdling snakes hissed out to lap the water drops from cheeks and hair and breast. Therefore I counsel thee, O king, receive this spirit, whoe'er he be, to Thebes in glory. Greatness manifold is all about him, and the tale is told that this is he who first to man did give the grief assuaging vine. O oh, let him live, for if he die, then love herself is slain, And nothing joyous in the world again. Leader, albeit I tremble, And scarce may speak my thought to a king's face, Yet will I hide it not. Dionys is God, no God more true nor higher. Pentheus, it bursts hard by us like a smothered fire, This frenzy of Bacchic women, all my land is made their mock. This needs an iron hand. Ho, oh, Captain, quick to the electron gate. Bid gather all my men-at-arms thereat. Call all that spur the charger, all who know to wield the orbed targe, or bend the bow. We march to war. For God, shall women dare such deeds against us? Tis too much to bear. Dionysus, thou markest me not, O king, and holdest light my solemn words, yet in thine own despite I warn thee still, lift thou not up thy spear against a god, but hold thy peace and fear his wrath, he will not brook it if thou fright his chosen from the hills of their delight. Pentheus, Peace thou, 
and if for once thou hast slipped thy chain, give thanks, or shall I not thine arms again? Dionysus, better to yield him prayer and sacrifice than kick against the prick, since Dionys is God, and thou but mortal. Pentheus, that will I, yea, sacrifice of women's blood to cry his name through all Kitharan. Dionysus, ye shall fly all, and the base your shields of bronze and rim before their wands. Pentheus, there is no way with him, this stranger that so dogs us well or ill. I may entreat him, he must babble still. Dionysus, wait, good my friend. These crooked matters may even yet be straightened. Pentheus has started, as though to seek his army at the gate. Pentheus, I, if I obey mine own slave's will, how else? Dionysus, myself will lead the damsels hither, without sword or steed. Pentheus, how now? This is some plot against me. Dionysus, what dost fear? Only to save thee do I plot. Pentheus, it is some compact ye have made whereby to dance these hills for ever. Dionysus, Verily, that is my compact, plighted with my lord. Pentheus, turning from him, Ho, armourers, bring forth my shield and sword, and thou be silent. Dionysus, after regarding him fixedly, speaks with resignation. Ah, have then thy will. He fixes his eyes upon Pentheus again, while the armourers bring out his armour, then speaks in a tone of command. Man, thou wouldst fain behold them on the hill praying. Pentheus, who, during the rest of this scene, with a few exceptions, simply speaks the thoughts that Dionysus puts into him, losing power over his own mind. That would I, though it cost me all the gold of Thebes. Dionysus, so much, thou art quick to fall to such great longing. Pentheus, somewhat bewildered at what he has said, Aye, twould grieve me much to see them flown with wine. Dionysus. Yet cravest thou such a sight as would much grieve thee? Pentheus. Yes, I fain would watch, ambushed among the pines. Dionysus. Twere vain to hide, they soon will track thee out. Pentheus, well said, twere best done openly. Dionysus, wilt thou be led by me, and try the venture? Pentheus, I indeed, lead on, why should we tarry? Dionysus, first we need a rich and trailing robe, of fine linen to gird thee. Pentheus, nay, am i a woman then and no man more dionysus wouldst have them slay thee dead no man may see their mysteries pentheus well said i mark thy subtle temper long ere now dionysus tis dionys that prompteth me Pentheus, and how meanest thou the further plan? Dionysus, first take thy way within, I will array thee. Pentheus, what array? The woman's? Nay, I will not. Dionysus, 
doth it change so soon all thy desire to see this strange adoring pentheus wait what garb wilt thou bestow about me dionysus first a long tress dangling low beneath thy shoulders pentheus i and next dionysus the said robe falling to thy feet and on thine head a snood pentheus and after hast thou aught beyond dionysus surely the dappled fawn-skin and the wand pentheus after a struggle with himself enough i cannot wear a robe and snood dionysus would sleeper draw the sword and spill men's blood pentheus again doubting true that were evil ay tis best to go first to some place of watch dionysus far wiser so than seek by wrath wrath's bitter recompense pentheus what of the city streets canst lead me hence unseen of any dionysus lonely and untried thy path for men shall be and i thy guide pentheus i care for nothing so these bacchanals triumph not against me forward to my halls within i will ordain what seemeth best Dionysus, so be it, O king. Tis mine to obey thine hest, whate'er it be. Pentheus, after hesitating once more and waiting, Well, I will go, perchance to march and scatter them with serried lance, perchance to take thy plan, I know not yet. Exit Pentheus into the castle. Dionysus, damsels, the lion walketh to the net. He finds his back eye now, and sees and dies and pays for all his sin. O oh, Dionys, this is thine hour, and thou not far away. Grant us our vengeance. First, O oh, master, stay the course of reason in him, and instill a form of madness. Let his seeing will which ne'er had stooped to put thy vesture on, be darkened till the deed is lightly done. Grant likewise that he find through all his streets loud scorn, this man of wrath and bitter threats that made Thebes tremble, led in woman's guise. I go to fold that robe of sacrifice on Pentheus, that shall deck him to the dark his mother's gift so shall he learn and mark god's true son dionyse in fullness god most fearful yet to man most soft of mood exit dionysus following pentheus into the castle chorus some maidens Will they ever come to me ever again, the long, long dances, on through the dark till the dim stars wane? Shall I feel the dew on my throat, and the stream of wind in my hair? Shall our white feet gleam in the dim expanses? O oh, feet of a fawn to the greenwood fled, alone in the grass and the loveliness. Leap of the hunted no more in dread beyond the snares and the deadly press yet a voice still in the distance sounds a voice and a fear and a haste of hounds o oh, wildly labouring fiercely fleet onward yet by river and glen is it joy or terror ye storm swift feet to the dear lone lands untroubled of men where no voice sounds 
and amid the shadowy green the little things of the woodland live unseen what else is wisdom what of man's endeavour or god's high grace so lovely and so great to stand from fear set free to breathe and wait to hold a hand uplifted over hate and shall not loveliness be loved for ever others o strength of god slow art thou and still yet failest never on them that worship the ruthless will on them that dream doth his judgment wait dreams of the proud man making great and greater ever things which are not of god in wide and devious coverts hunter wise he coucheth time's unhasting stride following following him whose eyes look not to heaven for all is vain the pulse of the heart the plot of the brain that striveth beyond the laws that live and is thy faith so much to give is it so hard a thing to see that the spirit of god whate'er it be the law that abides and changes not ages long the eternal and nature born these things be strong what else is wisdom what of man's endeavour or god's high grace so lovely and so great to stand from fear set free to breathe and wait to hold a hand uplifted over hate and shall not loveliness be loved for ever leader happy he on the weary sea who hath fled the tempest and won the haven happy whoso hath risen free above his striving for strangely graven is the orb of life that one and another in gold and power may outpass his brother and men in their millions float and flow and seethe with a million hopes as leaven and they win their will or they miss their will and the hopes are dead or are pined for still but whoe'er can know as the long days go that to live is happy hath found his heaven re-enter dionysus from the castle dionysus o i that cravest sights thou must not see o heart athirst for that which slakes not thee pentheus i call forth and be seen in guise of woman maenad saint of dionys to spy upon his chosen and thine own mother enter pentheus clad like a bacchanal and strangely excited a spirit of bacchic madness overshadowing him thy shape methinks is like to one of cadmus royal maids pentheus yea and mine eye is bright yon sun shines twofold in the sky thebes twofold and the wall of seven gates and is it a wild bull this that walks and waits before me there are horns upon thy brow what art thou man or beast for surely now the bull is on thee dionysus he who erst was wroth goes with us now in gentleness he hath unsealed thine eyes to see what thou shouldst see pentheus say stand i not as eno stands or she who bore me dionysus when i look on thee it seems i see their very selves but stay why streams that lock abroad not where i laid it crossed under the coif pentheus i did it as i tossed my head in dancing to and fro and cried his holy music dionysus tending him 
it shall soon be tied aright tis mine to tend thee nay but stand with head straight pentheus in the hollow of thy hand i lay me deck me as thou wilt dionysus thy zone is loosened likewise and the folded gown not evenly falling to the feet pentheus tis so by the right foot but here methinks they flow in one straight line to the heel dionysus while tending him and if thou prove their madness true i more than true what love and thanks hast thou for me pentheus not listening to him in my right hand is it or thus that i should bear the one to be most like to them dionysus up let it swing in the right hand timed with the right foot spring tis well thy heart is changed pentheus more wildly what strength is this Kitharan steeps and all that in them is how sayst thou could my shoulders lift the whole dionysus surely thou canst and if thou wilt thy soul being once so sick now stands as it should stand pentheus shall it be bars of iron or this bare hand and shoulder to the crags to wrench them down dionysus wouldst wreck the nymphs wild temples and the brown rocks where pan pipes at noonday pentheus nay not i force is not well with women i will lie hid in the pine brake dionysus even as fits a spy on holy and fearful things so shalt thou lie pentheus with a laugh they lie there now methinks the wild birds caught by love among the leaves and fluttering not dionysus it may be that is what thou goest to see i and to trap them so they trap not thee pentheus forth through the thebans town i am their king i their one man seeing i dare this thing dionysus yea thou shalt bear their burden thou alone therefore thy trial awaiteth thee but on with me into thine ambush shalt thou come unscathed then let another bear thee home pentheus the queen my mother dionysus marked of every eye pentheus for that i go dionysus thou shalt be born on high pentheus that were like pride dionysus thy mother's hands shall share thy carrying pentheus nay i need not such soft care dionysus so soft pentheus whate'er it be i have earned it well exit pentheus towards the mountain dionysus fell fell art thou and to a doom so fell thou walkest that thy name from south to north shall shine a sign for ever reach thou forth thine arms agave now and ye dark-browed cadmean sisters greet this prince so proud to the high ordeal where say god and me none walks unscathed the rest this day shall see exit dionysus following pentheus chorus some maidens 
O oh, hounds, raging and blind up by the mountain road, Sprites of the maddened mind to the wild maids of God, Fill with your rage their eyes, rage at the rage unblessed, Watching in woman's guise the spy upon God's possessed. A bacchanal, who shall be first to mark eyes in the rock that spy, eyes in the pine tree dark? Is it his mother? And cry, Lo, what is this that comes haunting, troubling still, even in our heights, our homes, the wild maids of the hill? What flesh bear this child? never on woman's breast changeling so evil smiled man is he not but beast lion shape of the wild gorgon breed of the waste all the chorus hither for doom and deed hither with lifted sword justice wrath of the lord Come in our visible need. Smite till the throat shall bleed. Smite till the heart shall bleed. Him, the tyrannous, lawless, godless, Echion's earth-born seed. Other maidens, tyrannously hath he trod, Marched him in law's despite, Against thy light, O God, yea, and thy mother's light, Girded him falsely bold, Blinded in craft to quell, And by man's violence hold things unconquerable. A bacchanal, a straight, pitiless mind, His death unto godliness, And to feel in humankind life, and a pain the less. Knowledge we are not foes, I seek thee diligently, but the world with a great wind blows, shining and not from thee, blowing to beautiful things, on amid dark and light, till life through the tremolings of laws that are not the right, breaks clean and pure and sings, Glorying to God in the height. All the chorus. Hither for doom and deed. Hither with lifted sword. Justice, wrath of the Lord. Come in our visible need. Smite till the throat shall bleed. Smite till the heart shall bleed. Him, the tyrannous, lawless, godless, Echion's earth-born seed. Leader, appear, appear, whatso thy shape or name, O mountain bull, snake of the hundred heads, lion of burning flame, O God, beast, mystery, come, thy mystic maids are hunted, blast the hunter with thy breath, cast o'er his head thy snare, and laugh aloud and drag him to his death, who stalks thy herded madness in its lair. Enter hastily, a messenger from the mountain, pale and distraught. Messenger. Woe to the house once blessed in Hellas! Woe to thee, old king Sidonian, who did sow the dragon seed on Ares' bloody leek! Alas, even thy slaves must weep for thee, Leader, news from the mountain speak, how hath it sped? Messenger, Pentheus, my king, Echion's son, is dead. Leader, all hail, god of the voice, manifest evermore. Messenger, what sayest thou, and how strange thy tone, as though in joy at this my master's overthrow? Leader, with fierce joy I rejoice, child of a savage short for the chains of my prison are broken and the dread where i cowered of york messenger 
and deem'st thou Thebes so beggared, so forlorn of manhood as to sit beneath thy scorn? Leader, Thebes hath o'er me no sway, none save him I obey. Dionysus, child of the highest, him I obey and adore. Messenger, one can forgive thee, yet tis no fair thing, maids, to rejoice in a man's suffering. Leader, speak of the mountain side, tell us the doom he died, the sinner smitten to death, even where his sin was sore. Messenger, we climbed beyond the utmost habitings of Theban shepherds, past Azopus springs, and struck into the land of rock on dim Kitharon, Pentheus and attending him, I and the stranger who should guide our way. Then first in a green dull we stopped and lay, lips dumb and feet unmoving warily, watching to be unseen and yet to see. A narrow glen it was, by crags or towered, torn through by tossing waters, and there loud a shadow of great pines over it. And there the minard maidens sate, in toil they were, busily glad, some with an ivy chain trapped a worn wand to toss its locks again, some wild in joyance, like young steeds set free, made answering songs of mystic melody. But my poor master saw not the great band before him. Stranger, cried he, where we stand mine eyes can reach not these false saints of thine. Mount we the bank, or some high-shouldered pine, and I shall see their follies clear. At that there came a marvel, for the stranger straight touched a great pine tree's high and heavenward crown, and lower, 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 urged it down to the herbless floor, round like a bending bow, or slow wheel's rim, a joiner forces too, so in those hands that tough and mountain stem bowed slow, O oh, strength not mortal dwelt in them, to the very earth, and there he set the king, and slowly, lest it cast him in its spring, let back the young and straining tree, till high it towered again amid the towering sky, and Pentheus in the branches. Well, I ween, he saw the maenads then, and well was seen, for scarce was he aloft, when suddenly there was no stranger any more with me, but out of heaven a voice, oh, what voice else, twas he that called, Behold, O damosels, I bring ye him who turneth to despite both me and ye, and darkeneth my great light, tis yours to avenge. So spake he, and there came twixt earth and sky a pillar of high flame, and silence took the air, and no leaf stirred in all the forest dell. Thou hadst not heard in that vast silence any wild things cry, and up they sprang, but with bewildered eye, a gaze and listening, scarce yet hearing true, then came the voice again, and when they knew their god's clear call, old Cadmus' royal brood, up like wild pigeons startled in a wood, on flying feet they came, his mother blind agave, and her sisters, and behind all the wild crowd, more deeply maddened them, through the angry rocks and torrent-tossing glen, until they spied him in the dark pine-tree. Then climbed a crag hard by, and furiously some sought to stone him, some their wands would fling, lance-wise aloft, in cruel targeting. But none could strike, the height or top their rage and there he clung unscathed, as in a cage, caught, and of all their strife no end was found. Then hither, cried Agave, stand we round, and grip the stem, my wild ones, till we take this climbing cut of the mount, he shall not make a tale of God's high dances. Out then shone arm upon arm past count, and closed upon the pine, and gripped, 
and the ground gave and down it reeled and that high sitter from the crown of the green pine top with a shrieking cry fell as his mind grew clear and there hard by was horror visible twas his mother stood o'er him first priestess of those rites of blood he tore the coif and from his head away flung it that she might know him and not slay to her own misery he touched the wild cheek crying mother it is i thy child thy pentheus born thee in echion's hall have mercy mother let it not befall through sin of mine that thou shouldst slay thy son but she with lips of foam and eyes that run like leaping fire with thoughts that ne'er should be on earth possessed by bacchios utterly stays not nor hears round his left arm she put both hands set hard against his side her foot drew and the shoulder severed not by might of arm but easily as the god made light her hands essay and at the other side was eno rending and the torn flesh cried and on otonoe pressed and all the crowd of ravening arms yea all the air was loud with groans that faded into sobbing breath dim shrieks and joy and triumph cries of death and here was borne a severed arm and there a hunter's booted foot white bones lay bare with rending and swift hands ensanguined tossed as in sport the flesh of pentheus dead his body lies afar the precipice hath part and parts in many an interstice lurk of the tangled woodland no light quest to find and are the head of all the rest his mother hath it pierced upon a wand as one might pierce a lion's and through the land leaving her sisters in their dancing place bears it on high yea to these walls her face was set exulting in her deed of blood calling upon her bromios her god her comrade fellow render of the prey her all victorious to whom this day she bears in triumph her own broken heart for me after that sight i will depart before agave comes o oh, to fulfil god's laws and have no thought beyond his will is man's best treasure high and wisdom true methinks for things of dust to cleave unto the messenger departs into the castle chorus some maidens weave ye the dance and call praise to god bless ye the tyrant's fall down is trod pentheus the dragon's seed wore he the woman's weed clasped he as death indeed clasped the rod a bacchanal yea the wild ivy lapped him and the doomed wild bull of sacrifice before him loomed others ye who did bromios scorn praise him the more bacchanals cadmus born praise with sore agony yea with tears great are the gifts he bears hands that a mother rears red with gore lead it but stay agave cometh and her eyes make fire around her reeling oh the prize cometh all hail a rout of dionys enter from the mountain agave mad and to all seeming wondrously happy bearing the head of pentheus in her hand the chorus maidens stand horror-struck at the sight the leader also horror-struck strives to accept it and rejoice in it as the god's deed agave ye from the lands of morn leader call me not i give praise agave lo from the trunk new shorn hither a mountain thorn bear we o asia born bacchanals bless this chase leader i see yea i see have i not welcomed thee agave very calmly and peacefully 
he was young in the wild wood without nets i caught him nay look without fear on the lion i have ta'en him leader where in the wild wood where have ye brought him agave kitheron leader kitheron agave the mountain hath slain him leader who first came nigh him agave i i tis confessed and they name me there by him agave the blessed leader who was next in the band on him agave the daughters leader the daughters agave of cadmus laid hand on him but the swift hand that slaughters is mine mine is the praise bless ye this day of days the leader tries to speak but is not able agave begins gently stroking the head agave gather ye now to the feast leader feast o miserable agave see it falls to his breast curling and gently tressed the hair of the wild bull's crest the young steer of the fell leader most like a beast of the wild that head those locks defiled agave lifting up the head more excitedly he wakened his mad ones a chase god a wise god he sprang them to seize this he prays where his band prays leader brooding with horror in the trail of thy mad ones thou tearest thy prize god agave dost praise it leader i praise this agave ah soon shall the land praise leader and pentheus o mother thy child agave he shall cry on my name as none other bless the spoils of the lion leader ay strange is thy treasure agave and strange was the taking leader thou art glad agave beyond measure yea glad in the breaking of dawn upon all this land by the prize the prize of my hand leader show then to all the land unhappy one the trophy of this deed that thou hast done agave ho oh, oh, ye men that round the citadel and shining towers of ancient thebe dwell come look upon this prize this lion's spoil that we have taken yea with our own toil we cadmus daughters not with leathern set the salian javelins not with hunter's net only white arms and swift hands bladed fall why make ye much ado and boast with all your armourers engines see these palms were bare that caught the angry beast and held and tear the limbs of him father go bring to me my father i and pentheus where is he my son he shall set up a ladder stair against this house and in the triglyphs there nail me this lion's head that gloriously i bring ye having slain him i even i she goes through the crowd towards the castle showing the head and looking for a place to hang it enter from the mountain cadmus with attendants bearing the body of pentheus on a bier cadmus arm with your awful burden follow me trolls to his house whose body grievously with many a weary search at last in dim catharan's glens i found torn limb from limb and through the interweaving forest weed scattered men told me of my daughter's deed when i was just returned within these walls with grey tiresias from the bacchanals and back i hide me to the hills again to seek my murdered son 
there saw i plain actaeon's mother ranging where he died otonoe and eno by her side wandering ghastly in the pine copses agave was not there the rumour is she cometh fleet-foot hither ah tis true a sight i scarce can bend mine eyes unto agave turning from the palace and seeing him my father a great boast is thine this hour thou hast begotten daughters high in power and valiant above all mankind yea all valiant though none like me i have let fall the shuttle by the loom and raised my hand for higher things to slay from out thy land wild beasts see in mine arms i bear the prize that nailed above these portals it may rise to show what things thy daughters did do thou take it and call a feast proud art thou now and highly favoured in our valiancy cadmus o depth of grief how can i fathom thee or look upon thee poor poor blood-stained hand poor sisters a fair sacrifice to stand before god's altars daughter yea and call me and my citizens to feast withal nay let me weep for thine affliction most than for mine own all all of us are lost not wrongfully yet is it hard from one who might have loved our bromios our own agave how crabbed and how scowling in the eyes is man's old age would that my son likewise were happy of his hunting in my way when with his warrior bands he will assay the wild beast nay his valiance is to fight with god's will father thou shouldst set him right will no one bring him hither that mine eyes may look on his and show him this my prize cadmus alas if ever ye can know again the truth of what ye did what pain of pain that truth shall bring or were it best to wait darken for evermore and deem your state not misery though ye know no happiness agave what seest thou here to chide or not to bless cadmus after hesitation resolving himself raise me thine eyes to yon blue dome of air agave tis done what dost thou bid me seek for there cadmus is it the same or changed in thy sight agave more shining than before more heavenly bright cadmus and that wild tremor is it with thee still agave troubled i know not what thou sayest but my will clears and some change cometh i know not how cadmus canst hearken then being changed and answer now agave i have forgotten something else i could cadmus what husband led thee of old from mine abode agave echion whom men called the child of earth cadmus and what child in echion's house had birth agave pentheus of my love and his father's bread cadmus thou bearest in thine arms an head what head agave beginning to tremble and not looking at what she carries a lion's so they all said in the chase cadmus turn to it now tis no long toil and gaze agave ah but what is it what am i carrying here cadmus look once upon it full till all be clear agave i see most deadly pain oh woe is me cadmus where's it the likeness of a lion to thee agave no tis the head of god of pentheus this Cadmus, blood drenched ere thou wouldst know him, I tis his. Agave, who slew him? How came I to hold this thing? Cadmus, O oh, cruel truth, is this thine homecoming? Agave, answer, my heart is hanging on thy breath. 
Cadmus, twas thou, thou and thy sisters wrought his death. Agave, in what place was it, his own house or where? Cadmus, where the dogs tore Actian even there. Agave, why went he to Catharon? What sought he? Cadmus, to mock the god and thine own ecstasy. Agave, but how should we be on the hills this day? Cadmus, being mad, a spirit drove all the land that way. Agave, tis Dionysus hath done it, now I see. Cadmus earnestly, ye wronged him, ye denied his deity. Agave, turning from him, show me the body of the son I love. Cadmus, leading her to the beard, tis here, my child, hard was the quest thereof. Agave, laid in due state. As there is no answer, she lifts the veil of the bier and sees. Oh, if I wrought a sin, t'was mine. What portion had my child therein? Cadmus, he made him like to you, adoring not the god, who therefore to one bane hath brought you and this body, wrecking all our line and me. I, no man-child was ever mine, and now this first fruit of the flesh of thee, sad woman, foully here and frightfully lies murdered, whom the house looked up unto, kneeling by the body. O oh, child, my daughter's child, who held us true my castle walls, unto the folk a name of fear thou wast, and no man sought to shame my grey beard, when they knew that thou wast there, else had they swift reward. And now I fare forth in dishonour outcast, I the great Cadmus, who sowed the seed-rows of this state of Thebes, and reaped the harvest wonderful. O oh, my beloved, though thy heart is dull in death, O oh, still beloved and always beloved, never more then shalt thou lay thine hand to this white beard and speak to me, thy mother's father. Ask, who wrongeth thee, who stints thine honour, or with malice stirs thine heart? Speak, and I smite thine injuries, but now, woe, woe to me and thee also, woe to thy mother and her sisters, woe alway, O oh, whoso walketh not in dread of God, let him but look on this man dead. Lead it, lo, I weep with thee, t'was but due reward God sent on Pentheus, but for thee tis hard. Agave, my father, thou canst see the change in me. A page or more has been torn out of the manuscript, from which all our copies of the Bacchae are derived. It evidently contained a speech of Agave, followed presumably by some words of the chorus, and an appearance of Dionysus upon a cloud. He must have pronounced judgment upon the Thebans in general, and especially upon the daughters of Cadmus, have justified his own action and declared his determination to establish his godhead. Where the manuscript begins again, we find him addressing Cadmus. Dionysus And tell of time what gifts for thee he bears, what griefs and wonders in the winding years, for thou must change and be a serpent thing. Strange, and beside thee she whom thou didst bring of old to be thy bride, from heaven afar, Harmonia, daughter of the Lord of War, yea, and a chariot of kine, so spake the word of Zeus, thee and thy queen shall take through many lands, Lord of a wild array of Orient spears, and many towns shall they destroy beneath thee that vast horde, until they touch Apollo's dwelling, and fulfil their doom, back driven on stormy ways, and steep. Thee only and thy spouse shall Ares keep, and save alive to the islands of the blest. Thus speaketh Dionysus, son confessed of no man, but of Zeus. Ah, had ye seen truth in the hour ye would not, all had been well with ye, and the child of God your friend. Agave, Dionysus, we beseech thee, we have sinned. Dionysus, too late, 
when there was time ye knew me not agave we have confessed yet is thine hand too hot dionysus ye mocked me being god this is your wage agave should god be like a proud man in his rage dionysus tis as my sire zeus willed it long ago agave turning from him almost with disdain old oh, man the word is spoken we must go dionysus and seeing ye must what is it that ye wait cadmus child we are come into a deadly strait all oh, thou poor sufferer and thy sisters twain and my sad self far off to barbarous men a grey-haired wanderer i must take my road and then the oracle the doom of god that i must lead a raging horde far flown to prey on hellas lead my spouse mine own harmonia heiress child discorporate and haunting forms dragon and dragon mate against the tombs and altar stones of greece lance upon lance behind us and not cease from toils like other men nor dream nor past the foam of acheron find my peace at last agave father and i must wander far from thee cadmus o oh, child why wilt thou reach thine arms to me as yearns the milk-white swan when old swans die agave where shall i turn me else no home have i cadmus i know not i can help thee not agave farewell o home o ancient tower lo i am outcast from my bower and leave ye for a worse lot cadmus go forth go forth to misery the way actaeon's father went agave father for thee my tears are spent cadmus nay child tis i must weep for thee for thee and for thy sisters twain agave on all this house in bitter wise our lord and master dionys hath poured the utter dregs of pain dionysus in bitter wise for bitter was the shame ye did me when thebes honoured not my name agave then lead me where my sisters be together let our tears be shed our ways be wandered where no red Kitharan waits to gaze on me nor i gaze back no thyrsus stem nor song nor memory in the air o oh, other bacchanals be there not i not i to dream of them agave with a group of attendants goes out on the side away from the mountain dionysus rises upon the cloud and disappears chorus there be many shapes of mystery and many things god makes to be past hope or fear and the end men looketh for cometh not and a path is there where no man thought so hath it fallen here exeunt end of chapter two end of the bacchae by euripides translated by gilbert murray Notes on the Bacchae by Gilbert Murray This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison Notes on the Bacchae An Introductory Note The Bacchae, being from one point of view a religious drama, a kind of mystery play, is full of allusions both to the myth and to the religion of Dionysus. 1. The myth, as implied by Euripides. Semele, daughter of Cadmus, being loved by Zeus, asked her divine lover to appear to her once in his full glory. He came, a blaze of lightning, in the ecstasy of which Semele died, 
giving premature birth to a son. Zeus, to save this child's life, and make him truly God as well as man, tore open his own flesh, and therein fostered the child, till in due time, by a miraculous and mysterious second birth, the child of Semele came to full life as God. 2. The religion of Dionysus is hard to formulate or even describe, both because of its composite origins and because of its condition of constant vitality, fluctuation, and development. A. The first datum, apparently, is the introduction from Thrace of the characteristic god of the wild northern mountains, a god of intoxication, of inspiration, a giver of superhuman or immortal life. His worship is superposed upon that of diverse old tree or vegetation gods already worshipped in Greece. He becomes specially the god of the vine. Originally a god of the common folk, despised and unauthorized, he is eventually so strong as to be adopted into the Olympian hierarchy as the youngest of the gods, son of Zeus. His Olympian name, so to speak, is Dionysus, but in his worship he is addressed by numbers of names, more or less mystic and secret. Bromios, Bacchios, or Bacchaeus, Iacos, Eleutherchus, Zagreus, Zabazios, etc. Some of these may be the names of old spirits whom he has displaced. Some are his own Thracian names. Bromos and Sabaja, for instance, seem to have been Thracian names for two kinds of intoxicating drink. Bacchos means a wand. Together with his many names, he has many shapes, especially appearing as a bull and a serpent. B. This religion, very primitive and barbarous, but possessing a strong hold over the emotions of the common people, was seized upon and transfigured by the great wave of religious reform, known under the name of Orphism, which swept over Greece and South Italy in the 6th century BC, and influenced the teachings of such philosophers as Pythagoras, Aristeus, Empedocles, and the many writers on purification and the world after death. Orphism may very possibly represent an ancient Cretan religion in clash or fusion with one from Thrace. At any rate, it was grafted straight upon the Dionysus worship, and without rationalizing, spiritualized and reformed it. Ascetic, mystical, ritualistic, and emotional, Orphism easily excited both enthusiasm and ridicule. It lent itself both to inspired saintliness and to imposture. In doctrine it laid a special stress upon sin and the sacerdotal purification of sin, on the eternal reward due beyond the grave to the pure and the impure, the pure living in an eternal ecstasy, perpetual intoxication, as Plato satirically calls it, the impure toiling through long ages to wash out their stains. It recast in various ways the myth of Dionysus, 
and especially the story of his second birth. All true worshippers become, in a mystical sense, one with the God. They are born again, and are bakoi. Dionysus being the God within, the perfectly pure soul is possessed by the God holy, and becomes nothing but the God. Based on very primitive rites and feelings, on the religion of men who made their gods in the images of snakes and bulls and fawns, because they hardly felt any difference of kind between themselves and the animals, the worship of Dionysus kept always this feeling of kinship with wild things. The beautiful side of this feeling is vividly conspicuous in the Bacchae, and the horrible side is not in the least concealed. A curious relic of primitive superstition and cruelty remained firmly embedded in Orphism. A doctrine irrational and unintelligible, and for that very reason wrapped in the deepest and most sacred mystery, a belief in the sacrifice of Dionysus himself and the purification of man by his blood. It seems possible that the savage Thracians, in the fury of their worship on the mountains, when they were possessed by the god and became wild beasts, actually tore with their teeth and hands any hares, goats, fawns, or the like that they came across. There survives a constant tradition of inspired bacchanals in their miraculous strength, tearing even bulls asunder, a feat, happily, beyond the bounds of human possibility. The wild beast that tore was, of course, the savage god himself, and by one of those curious confusions of thought, which seems so inconceivable to us, and so absolutely natural and obvious to primitive men, the beast torn was also the god. The Orphic congregations of later times, in their most holy gatherings, solemnly partook of the blood of a bull, which was, by a mystery, the blood of Dionysus Zagreus himself, the bull of God, slain in sacrifice for the purification of man, and the minads of poetry and myth, among more beautiful proofs of their superhuman or infrahuman character, have always to tear bulls in pieces and taste of the blood. It is noteworthy, and throws much light on the spirit of Orphism, that apart from this sacramental tasting of the blood, the Orphic worshipper held it an abomination to eat the flesh of animals at all. The same religious fervour and zeal for purity, which made him reject the pollution of animal food, made him, at the same time, cling to a ceremonial which would utterly disgust the ordinary hardened flesh-eater. It fascinated him, just because it was so incredibly primitive and uncanny, because it was a mystery which transcended reason. It will be observed that Euripides, though certainly familiar with Orphism, which he mentions in the Hippolytus, and treated at length in the Cretans, see appendix, has in the Bacchae gone back behind Orphism, to the more primitive stuff from which it was made. He has little reference to any specially Orphic doctrine, not a word, for instance, about the immortality of the soul, and his idealization or spiritualization of Dionysus' worship proceeds along the lines of his own thought, not on those already fixed by the Orphic teachers. End of Notes on the Bacchae by Gilbert Murray